Amen. Again, welcome here to Calvary Chapel Northwest, our Wednesday night Bible study. And um, you all are aware that tonight is a special night, a night where we recognize God's calling on, on one of our brothers, the first elder of our church. Uh, we've been here for over two years now, and some of you may be wondering, you just getting an elder now? But um, one of the things that my pastor counseled on me when I, when I was called, he said, don't appoint anyone quickly. Be very slow with titles. Let, let, let them do the work without a title. Be very slow. And I've gotten this counsel from several pastors, so I took it since I don't have a pastor's handbook. And um, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, it's time. And Felipe is a man that I have known long before he was even born again. And I was privileged to see the transition as, as he was born again, to see that radical change in his life. Uh, I was there for the birth of all three of his children. I saw when, when they were, I wasn't physically there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I, I knew him. I was part of his life. Uh, and I have seen this man grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ from a baby Christian to a man that is mature. Uh, an elder serves behind the scenes, takes care of the many, many activities of the church, which, which allow me to be free to do the things that I do, teaching the word of God, counseling, and, and praying. Uh, I would like to read the qualifications of an elder, which is the same as a pastor because a pastor is an elder. It comes from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. It says, this is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, same word as elder, he desires a good work. A bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, Lest, being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So, I testify that our brother Felipe meets these qualifications, and we're here to recognize God's call on his life as an elder. So, brother, if you would come up with Jordan and your family, Kelly, and come up and stand with Jordan. I'm going to anoint my brother with oil, symbolizing the Holy Spirit, which... He is full of and overflowing with. Pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for my brother Felipe, Lord. Thank you for him, God. And your call on his life, Lord. So we, we acknowledge your work, what you have done, dear God. We pray, Lord, that your hand would be on him and his family, that you would protect him, Lord, and them as they continue to grow 
in your grace and knowledge, Lord, as he puts his hand to the plow, Lord, and does the work that you have called him to. Lord God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, we come before you, and I ordain Felipe an elder in the church of Jesus Christ, in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Calvary Chapel Northwest. Yeah. It's not announcements, but I'm going to be up here for a while. Um, so, yeah. Um, I just want to say i got to bust out my, my trusty glasses. Can't really see too well. Uh, but I just want to say what a, a privilege, an honor, and a blessing it is to be up here in front of you to share what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart. The Holy Spirit has placed so much on my heart. I won't be able to touch on everything uh, due to the time, but trust that the Holy Spirit will, will, um, will work in what is said. God is good. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, I thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to be up here, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to grow and serve you even more, Lord God. As you have saved me, Lord, from utter destruction, you saved me from the pit of hell, Lord. And I thank you for your eternal salvation, Lord, changing my life, Lord. I pray, Lord, that these words that come out of my mouth, Lord, are your words. I pray that they find fertile soil, Lord, in, in all those who hear. Lord God, may this just be a blessed time of fellowship, Lord. And that if anyone doesn't know you, Lord, that they'd make that, that decision, Lord, to serve you today, Lord. But just use me, Lord, as your vessel. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So it was August 8th, 2021, the day Pastor Ellis asked me to consider becoming an elder of this church. Hold on, let me uh, set the timer because you know what, we know what happened at the retreat. Although I was on time. I was on time. I just gave myself more time. Uh, anyway, uh, so... As pastor said, the first elder. I was like, wow, what, what an incredible honor. When he asked, I knew in my heart, my mind, and my spirit, the answer would be yes. He told me to pray about it. So my wife and I, we prayed about it, and we came to a conclusion pretty quickly. So here we are. You know, it's, it's very important that we pray about all of our situations whenever we're facing whatever situation that we're in. Uh, and married couples, um, I know we have a lot of season one season couples here, but it's important that we pray about situations together and seek the Lord, seek the Holy Spirit, that uh, the Holy Spirit may confirm what we prayed about. Um, you know, when Pastor asked me to consider this calling, I was actually receiving counsel. So uh, he let me know, he let me know, I think I know why you've been going through these trials, brother. He said, I think I put a target on your back. He said, you see, right around the time, uh, right around the time the trials came was when the Holy Spirit laid this revelation on pastor's heart. And you know the enemy loves nothing better than to trip us up, cause us to stumble, try to get us to take our eyes off the Lord and break fellowship. That didn't stop then. This morning, I didn't set my alarm correctly. I woke up 15 minutes late, had to be at work 15 minutes early. My watch didn't charge. My neck was hurting, like, really bad. And then that was just the first five minutes of the day. So, <laughs> but the kids, you know, they were on their best behavior. <laughs> yeah, okay. So <laughs> all the way up until, until, uh, until we started. But that's okay. I knew what was going on. Greater is he that is in me than he, than he who is in the world. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter 5.8 tells us, be, so, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, 
the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So as I finished the session with Pastor, he laid it on me. I want you to consider being an elder in our church. And uh, it's funny because that was the day before my scheduled colonoscopy. And I'll tell you, I did not have to take the prep because <laughs> it scared the crab out of me. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you see, when, when you're in leadership, you have a greater responsibility in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord takes it very seriously when people are led astray because of your actions or words. You, I looked up the responsibilities of becoming an elder. I had seen them before, but I had to see them again. And, and Pastor just read them in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. And as he was reading them, I was like, you know, uh, did, did, did y'all see my children today? You know, <laughs> so, but it, it, it's not that they're going to act perfect, but we just keep on teaching them in the way of the Lord. Uh, and, and we don't give up. We just keep on uh, keeping on uh, with, with that, just uh, trusting in the Lord. Immediately after he asked me, I went into thought, like just playing that scenario in my head, like have you ever been talking to somebody and you're just kind of like thinking about other stuff while they're talking? I was like, you sure you don't want to keep things the way they are? I mean, it's working out pretty good. I'm just out in the back. I'm, I'm good. But when you're walking with the Lord, things don't stay the same. And at least they shouldn't. We can't stay in place. We need to grow. We need to grow up and become women and men of God. I had an, I had an immediate sense of inadequacy when I was asked. But the Lord reminded me that he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And the qualifications for leadership have nothing to do with giftedness. God doesn't say go out and get the most gifted men. God may easily and instantly create gifts in a man because gifts are given by the Holy Spirit as he wills. We, we see that in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 11. He, and, and something came to me today. He gives us the skill and the will. So, yeah. When I was reading this, I thought of our worship team, you know, uh, and how they've trusted, their, trusted the Lord and grown in their ability to use this created talent to lead our services to worship our Lord in, in song. We have people that have learned the drums, the guitar, trusted the Lord to overcome their shyness and bless us with their voices. And, and they're just getting, y'all heard them today. I was pumped up. Great I am. Thank you. Thank you, worship team, for playing the songs that, that, I, that I asked. It, it just pumped me up. And I was one of the woo. So, yeah. Another scripture that came to mind is, is, uh, was that God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. That's 1 Corinthians 127. What qualifies a man for spiritual leadership is godly character. And godly character established through the clear criteria that we saw in 1 Timothy chapters, uh, chapter 3, 1 through 7 uh, in the qualifications for elders and pastors. Pastor told me, brother, you've already been fulfilling this role. This is just the acknowledgement of it. He, he told me that Pastor Ron was 100% aligned with this for our church, so that, that gave me some confidence as well. Um, and, and, you know, this was not something that I was striving for or even seeking. All I wanted to do was serve the Lord and his church in any way, filling any need with my limited set of skills, but with a willing heart, spirit, and attitude, doing all as unto the Lord. The fact I even think like this is the Lord, because before I knew him, I definitely did not think like this. I was selfish. Um, I love this next verse. Um, but it buzz at, but adds it. I'm already elder fud. <laughs> Goodness gracious! <laughs> but at, at, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love Him. First Corinthians two nine. You know, the first time I heard this scripture was from Pastor Ellis, actually, at one of the first men, men's retreats, and it just blew me away as I reflected upon it. I was just a baby Christian starting my walk. I could have never imagined that the Lord would want to use me in any way, much less being up here today. I was just glad they let me in the building. So, 
You know, so we can't, we can't even imagine what the Lord has in store for us. And if you're sitting out there or watching online thinking, ah, that would never be me. Remember that verse. Look at Paul. He persecuted the church violently, as he stated. And look at what the Lord did through him. Penned the majority of the New Testament, the chief of sinners, as he called himself. Never did I think I would be doing anything for the church, nor did I want to. But God, he changed my heart. And all he needed was a willing heart, as I stated earlier. And all he needs is yours as well. Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Other translations say wholeheartedly, with your whole heart. Just the Lord wants, wants all of you, not just a piece. And that's when he can do his, his, his work. So a couple of weeks ago, I got with Pastor to get some pointers on how to get my study together. You know, you know, pastor studies, they just flow. So he showed me a way uh, to make it easier, to connect my phone to my tablet and vice versa. If y'all say vice versa, that's not right. Say vice versa. So, so as I saved it from my tablet to this new easier way, I was excited. I was like, man, I got this. So I did it, boom, and it vanished. Gone. Gone. Everything. Done. Just a blank, one sentence. Uh, it's definitely user error. But uh, talk about the wind out of your sails. If you've ever been a student or working on an important project, it was like having your research paper or your work almost ready to turn in. You're going to hit that button and then boom, gone. So I had to start over from square one. You see, that's how the enemy works. As we talked about earlier, he hates what's going on here. Remember, he would love nothing better than to sidetrack all of us in here and you watching online. How are you going to respond when things don't go your way? Proverbs 24, 16 tells us, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Christian, you're going to make mistakes. I mean, we don't aim for that, but when we do, we give it to the Lord. We repent wholeheartedly. Continue on the path, and we just keep getting up, keep moving on. So when my work vanished, Pastor calmly said, calm, Pastor calmly said, Holy Spirit will give it to you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, he already did. <laughs> but guess what? He was right. He was right, because that very night at 2 a.m., I couldn't sleep. I had all these things in my head. I was already thinking I'm behind. I'm so behind. But I had all these things. The Holy Spirit was just throwing in my head. So I started back at it, 2 o'clock in the morning. By, by 4.30, I had more than, I, than I, originally, or I originally did. Some things came back. New things were revealed. With all the Holy Spirit has given, given to me, I could go all night, but I'm not going to do that to you on a Wednesday night. We all got to go to bed. My bedtime is actually probably earlier than all of, you, all of yours. So for those in a trial, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us, No temptation has overtaken, overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, God allows us to endure trials, to increase our faith. He allows us to bend but not break. You know, when, when making a sword, you, you, you heat a, a raw piece of metal, and it makes it pliable. You're able to shape it and mold it. When it's gone through the fire, it comes out a well-shaped a, a well weapon completely different than it came in. I've watched a forge and fire a few times, so I'm kind of an expert. Yeah. But be, be a holy weapon for the Lord. As James 1, 2 tells us, to count all trials as joy, as it produces steadfastness and steadfastness having its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Trials is joy. Sounds crazy. But, but you saved in here, y'all know what I'm talking about. And Romans 5, 5, 3 through 5 takes it a step further. And not only, not only that. But we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given, 
who was given to us. So th both of these passages speak to us allowing the Lord to work in us. We can be willing to trust the Lord and be blessed through these trials, or we can wallow in self-pity and miss the blessing and the fullness of joy that the Lord had in store for us. For those of you that know me, y'all know I had open heart surgery last year, and I could have been with the Lord last June if, if my surgery didn't turn out as expected, but I'm still here to do his work. If I focused on myself during this trial, this uncertainty, I would have missed out on many opportunities the Lord has given me and has used me and is still using me because of that circumstance. If you're going through something, trust the Lord. Allow Him to grow you and use you through it. Thy will, not my will, be done. Trust Him. And that, before I had surgery, that's what I said. I said, Lord, whatever goes on today in that operating room, in that, in, in that OR, thy will, not my will, be done. So some of you know I was actually in the hospital on Sunday with some chest pain. That's why I wasn't here. And you all were blessed with Stephanie doing announcements. So <laughs> while I was experiencing these symptoms, it was chest pressure. It was like I hadn't experienced before. It was hard to catch my breath. I had nausea, dizziness. But in all that, I wasn't fearful. I loved my wife, my kids, my family. But I said, Jesus, if this is my time, I'll see you soon. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Peace. So pastor asked me to choose a date. And I chose a date in September because it's an important month for me. I gave my heart to the Lord in September. I was baptized in September and now ordained as an elder in September. Maybe one day I'll go home to be with the Lord in September. We still got eight days in this month. <laughs> Lord, I'm ready. If you're watching online and you're thinking I got a death wish, I don't. I just know that being with the Lord will surpass anything I could ever experience here on earth. And I'm ready to be him, be with him for eternity. Aren't you? So when this whole elder ordination thing came about, the Holy Spirit put a certain scripture on my heart in fulfilling this role. A verse that embodies serv servitude. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. As an elder, I'm called to be a servant of the Lord by serving this church and the people that come through those doors, seeing all with his eyes and loving them with his heart, encouraging, edifying, praying, standing in the gap. It goes on and on, but with a ready and willing heart. I'll be learning this role as I continue to grow, so please give me some grace. And in return, you'll get my heart. When you're called to leadership, a change in your heart must occur. And this change opens your heart to serve, not to be elevated. To show that we belong to the Lord by displaying love in the way the Lord did. We're not to lord it over anyone. You know, you're talking to an elder now. <laughs> nah, none of that. None of that. So in Mark 22, we're, we are told... And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. That's Mark 23, 22, 37 to 39. Who is our neighbor? Everyone. Remember, for God so loved the world. Saved and unsaved. Vaccinated and unvaccinated. I'm not going to get into that one, but... Uh, so we are, here, we are to treat others as, as you would like to be treated. Love others. Esteem others above yourself. Taking it a step further, if anyone says he loves God but hates his brother, he is a liar. 1 John 4.20. So as a body, here in San Antonio, here in San Antonio <clears throat> is a unique dynamic. We're a military city, USA. 
So we have many people from different regions, walks of life, upbringings, personalities, many opinions, outspoken. All of, all of you that have been in the military, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So how much more are we called to love our brothers and sisters in Christ despite our different outlooks on certain non-doctrinal issues? This moves us into Matthew 12, 48 to 50. Jesus asked, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and he said, look, these are my mother, my brothers. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. Look around, church. This is your family, the family of Christ. So, We're to have the spirit of humility. That's what we do here. Our body's small, so many of us are in a ministry, some more than one. When we perform our work as unto the Lord, we don't seek credit. The Lord sees all, and in, and in what heart we do it from, begrudgingly, self-seeking, or from a pure heart. I'm on the safe team, and our safe team's mission is all, to always display a spirit of grace. We work behind the scenes to ensure that you have an unhindered experience and service, and we take that mission to the utmost. Save team, y'all know what I'm talking about. This brings us to the next topic. Correction, rebuking. Galatians 6.1 tells us, brethren, brothers, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, a sin, you who are spiritual, godly, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, meekness, humility, considering yourself lest you be tempted. We need to be very careful when we're rebuking, making sure that we're, we're, we correct in love. This, doesn't, this does not mean that we ever compromise with sin when dealing with the struggling brother or sister. We are never to do that. But if we win a discussion or um, a debate, and we push someone away from the Lord in our winning, what have we really done? We're all, we, we're all at different points in our walk. A more seasoned believer can lead someone in their walk or push them away. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to lead us in this way. Ro Romans 15.2 tells us we should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. In fact, I may not be here if the person the Lord used to lead me to him was self-righteous or legalistic. So be careful, church. You know, I was talking to one of the guys from CS CCSA, Mark Slagle. Some, some of y'all know him. I, I was talking to him a couple years ago. We were talking about how I came to the Lord. Because we Christians, we like to do that, right? We're interested in on what changed, how our brothers and sisters, you know, came to the Lord. We, we, we love to hear the testimonies. I let him know that uh, Pastor Ellis led me to the Lord in, in PT school, physical therapy school. Mark said, man, we prayed for you. I was a little confused. And he said, you see, once Ellis was accepted to PT school, he attended a prayer meeting and prayed for the salvation of his classmates, that the Lord would use him as a vessel. It took three years, but I was that person. Ellis was on a mission to get a PT degree. But more importantly, he was on a mission for the Lord. They're always watching. They're always watching. So let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Ephesians 4.29. E, as we knew him back then, may not have known it, but the way he was carrying himself was making an effect on me. We were friends, but I never told him what I was seeing or, or feeling. I was taking notice of the things he did and didn't do. It was peculiar to me that he wouldn't do some of the things that we were doing, drinking, carrying on and such. He showed me that you could still have fun and be cool without sinning. He still does. I told you about the men's retreat. He even walked cool. You know, he still does. He's...
<laughs> Sometimes I try it, I just look like I'm hurt. <laughs> but you know, he didn't Bible thump me or thou shalt not me. Because that, that might have pushed me away, this prideful unbeliever. Don't judge me, bro. You know, but that's the importance of being led by the Holy Spirit that we're talking about earlier. His faithful walk and caring nature drew me closer and closer to something I had to have. I didn't know what it was, but it was Jesus. You see, people are always watching, whether you realize it or not. The fact is, we're lights in this dark world. Not only lights, but the brightest lights that you can ever think of. You are making a difference, even if you may not see any visible changes. So keep, keep walking the good walk, keep fighting the good faith. The, the, the good fight of faith. Remember, Noah preached for 120 years and eight people got saved. And it was his family. So as I just, as I just said, keep fighting that good fight of faith, brothers and sisters. You can save a life. Obedience is what the Lord wants from us. Next, be available. Every time I have needed Ellis, and there have been many, he has been there. No matter what time, what day, what he had going on, he always made time for a brother in need. So should you. The Bible tells us, bear one, another, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.2. This doesn't literally mean to carry somebody else's burdens. Like, oh man, you're in debt. Oh man, let me take that debt for you. No, it, it means, it's just a simple command to obey. Look for a brother or sister with a burden, struggling or troubled, and help them with it. We aren't meant to carry burdens alone. Discernment is huge in this area. If you know a brother or sister well, you can discern when something isn't up to snuff. Proverbs 27, 17 tells us, as iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another. Church, after all this, I just want you to reflect on a few things. Do you really know Jesus? Do you love, I mean truly love the way he has called us to? Has your life been changed in a real and personal way? Are you still doing the same things that you used to? Is there fruit in your life? Up until this point, I've been talking primarily to the Christian. But if you're here or watching online and know that you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus or feel that tugging in your heart, and if you have not surrendered your life to the Lord and allowed him to reign in your life, you can make that decision to stop trying to do things in your own power. Making the same mistakes over and over again and allow the Lord Jesus into your heart, and he will transform you and change your life the way he did mine. You can do that right now. So if you're in the sanctuary, and you don't know Jesus in a real and personal way, and you want that, you can receive Jesus right now. In the privacy of, of bowed heads and closed eyes, please lift up your hands so I may, I may pray with you. Anyone? Figured. If you're watching online and would like to receive Jesus, I can't see your hand, but the Lord sees your heart. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you died for my sins, were buried, and on the third day defeated death and rose again. I believe that your sacrifice gives me eternal salvation in you. I surrender my life to you and promise to follow and obey you all the days of my life. If you prayed this prayer, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, For he who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, all things have become new. If you're online and, and you gave your heart to the Lord, please email us at calvarynorthwest at gmail.com so we can help you grow in your walk. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for these words that you've placed on my heart, Lord, these scriptures, Lord. I thank you for everyone that, had, that has come here, Lord, to be here as, as I've been ordained as an elder today, Lord God. I pray that you just speak to everyone, Lord. Draw 
each one closer to you in a more intimate walk, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that they trust you with everything, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.